With our castings all done, it was now time for fabricating and painting. First, we stuck all the imp heads into a scrap piece of styrofoam. Then we hazed them lightly with an orange spray paint. We just felt like this gave them a better orange base color than the pigment we used. And now it was time to fabricate their little viney bodies. We used plastic wrap, a heat gun, scissors, and some leather gloves. So first, we wrapped some plastic wrap all the way around the armature wire. Next, we start to heat up and slightly melt the plastic, then squeeze and shape it with our gloved hand. And this is what we were going for, just an organic, vine-like shape. And now it was time to make the arms. We took a small piece of plastic and wrapped it around the body like this. Then we hit that with a little heat just to lock it on. Then we heated up and squeezed and shaped each of the arms. And there you go, that's how we created their little viney bodies. We really tried to give each one a different attitude by shaping their bodies and arms in a unique way. So next, we painted the vine bodies with a dark green base coat. We used an acrylic house paint, but any acrylic paints will work fine. Once those were dry, it was time to dry brush them with a lighter green color. Slightly dip your brush into the paint and then dab off most of it onto a paper towel. Then start to lightly brush over the vines, almost like you are just dusting the surface. The high points of the texture will pick up the light green paint and really make the details pop. And here's how it should look. You can see the great contrast between the dark green in the low spots and the light green on the high spots of the texture. Next, we took some dollar store skeletons and carefully cut out a small section of the ribs with some wire snips. Then using some pliers, we held it over the heat gun to carefully heat up one side of the ribs and make them pliable. Then we used some needle nose pliers to slightly curl the ribs and I blow on them to cool them off and lock them in place. You can see here the curl we created. Now we will do the same thing to the other side of the ribs. Remember to always be careful not to overheat and melt the plastic. And there we go. Now we have a small rib cage that will fit over our vine bodies. Now it's time to attach the ribs. We use a hot glue gun and apply a small bead of glue to the backside and then just press it onto the vine and hold it until it sets. And there you have it. And now we just do the same thing to all the others. Next, it was time to paint the eyes. We started with a base coat of white acrylic mixed with a little yellow and carefully painted each eye. It took about two or three coats to really get some good coverage on them. All right, looks like we've got a good base coat on all the eyes. Next, we added some more yellowing around the edges of the eyes and we varied it up. Some were more yellow than others. Again, this just helped to make each one unique. Then we added their tiny red pupils. 
We made all the pupils looking in different directions. Making them all look in different directions really gave them their unique personalities and helped with staging the scene later. Next, we coated the entire body and ribs with clear Elmer's glue to help lock everything together. And once that was dry, we did a few coats of matte spray to knock down the gloss and seal it for the next step. And I also added some milky white paint over the pupils just to tone down the red a bit. So now it was time to do a brown wash and rub out on them to really make the details pop. I thinned some brown acrylic paint with a bit of water and then brush it on completely covering a section of the head. Then I use a damp paper towel and rub the paint off of all the high points leaving the brown paint down in all the deep spots of the detail. Next, I do the same thing to the rest of the head. You want to work really fast so that you have time to rub off the wet paint before it dries. You can see how this really shadows your sculpture and makes the details pop. I like to leave some blotchy spots in the eyes to make them look really grimy. Next, I do the same thing to the underside of the head and the ribs, and again, wipe the high points with a damp paper towel. I also left the ribs a little blotchy and grungy looking too. And there you have it. Now that the paint was done, it was time for the final steps to really bring these to life. So stick around for part five, where we finish up these baby pumpkin imps. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you soon.